Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Friday, it's September 30th. It's the last day of September, so we're heading now into October, uh, getting really autumnal here. So I hope that you're doing well, and I thank you again for being here this morning and for making Mornings with 60 and Me a part of your day. It's just wonderful to know you're there. So thank you. Now, um, I've got my cup of tea this morning. Now, I'm trying something a little different. Um, it's it's one of my um, yogi teas. It's called Honey Bush. Now, I didn't know what a honey bush was, so I went um, online, and apparently um, it's from... South Africa it's a plant that is used for teas and it's really a, a nice and interesting tea I've never had it before but this particular tea had a little um, slogan that went with it which said whatever life gives you make the best of it um, accept with an open heart and trust your intuition and then this tea has honey bush ginger anise cinnamon rosemary ginger it's amazing. It's got so much in it, and um, it's it's really delicious. It tastes ginger to me because it's very strong taste, but it's a lovely tea, honey bush. And you can see my fingers here. Do you see my fingers? How yellow they are. <laughs> I was making turmeric tea last night and I was trying to grate the turmeric and this is what happens if you don't put gloves on. <laughs> anyway, I love turmeric and it's good for you, so I figured my fingers can be yellow for a bit. It's no problem. So that's my tea for today. So what are you drinking today? Um, I loved your comments yesterday about your teas and coffees. It was National Coffee Day, so we all had a chat about drinks. And um, I'm glad that you um, are trying new teas as a result of being here with Mornings on 60 and Me. So um, let's get started with the news of the world and, um, I, and, I, and one feel-good story that I promised you yesterday that I think really will make you smile on this Friday. So, first thing uh, to report is the tragedy that happened in the morning rush hour yesterday in Hoboken um, in New York. This is a, station, a train station, it's about, I don't know, six or seven miles from New York City. A lot of people use it to get from the outlying areas into Manhattan, but there was um, a train that just went, it crashed into the station. Uh, don't know what happened. The engineer, the driver, is uh, he, he survived and is not in good condition, but he is helping the police. They're trying to understand, of course, what, what went wrong. Passengers report that the train just didn't stop. It just went, crashed into the station and uh, went into the, uh, into the reception area. In fact, the one woman that was killed was on the platform. Very, very sad. So we'll know more about that today, but I want to obviously, um, you know, reach out. If any of our women in the 16 Me community uh, were involved in this accident in any way, uh, let us know how you're doing. Um, we have a lot of people in New York, and so I just pray that no one was involved. Uh, just take good care out there. Um, and just a report about what's happening in India. Now, I've talked about this a few times, and it's a little bit low-key at the moment, but things um, could get a little heated. There's a part of India called Kashmir in the northeast, and it's partially, um, it's an Indian territory, but there's a, right on the border with Pakistan. So yesterday, there were some skirmishes across the border and by India into Pakistan. And of course, the Pakistan um, our army says it didn't happen. It's, you know, it's not true, but it's just a lot of um, conflict in that part of the world. And they are both nuclear armed countries. That's what is of concern. They just need to find a way to live in peace. But it's a very delicate situation. The area is primarily Muslim, so that's you know adds to the complexity of the situation. But let's hope that it doesn't go any further. With regards to areas of the world that are under under stress, the um, uh, United States is about to break ties or at least conversations with Russia about Syria. Uh, Russia is not backing down on its support of the uh, Syrian government, uh, and they are continuing to bomb Aleppo. Two hospitals were destroyed a couple of days ago, and it just doesn't seem to have any end. The Syrian government is determined to uh, launch a, a, gr a ground offensive to take over Aleppo, which is a very critical key city to, to them. So that's in, in Syria. Um, in the United States, uh, there a couple of days ago, there was a, a vote. Congress voted to overrule a veto that President Obama had made concerning um, the permission for relatives of 9-11 uh, victims to sue the Saudi Arabia government. You know, most of the people, um, attackers in that um, horrible event were, were from Saudi Arabia. 
So they voted to, uh, to override his veto. Now, several of them are having second thoughts because President Obama you know, explained very calmly yesterday that this wouldn't have been an easy decision to vote against because, of course, everyone wants to support the 9-11 victims. But what this law does is sets a precedent that um, really anyone can sue any country um, who, who f where they feel that um, military action or some terrorist action has harmed their people. So it really could have very far-reaching implications for the world. But um, the U.S. Congress decided to overrule it, you know, primarily because it's it's just before the election, and I think everyone wanted to do their best, you know, for the for the people involved in 9-11. But anyway, it's one of these things. You start a ripple and then it um, continues and we don't know where that's going. But speaking of big ripples, <laughs> Dominican Republic is bracing itself for Hurricane Matthew, which is on its way. This is not just gonna hit their area, probably will hit or at least affect Cuba, uh, Jamaica, and even possibly the coast of Florida. So this is one of these very slow-moving hurricanes that will be able to see the movement, you know, so predict the movement. So watch out for it if you're living in uh, Florida or if you're going on a cruise in the Caribbean because it's going to be a, a bumpy ride. <laughs> but um, anyway, that's, that's happening in the Dominican Republic. Now, that's the news of the world for the day. But I have a story um, I want to share with you on a Friday to kind of make us all take a second look at the things that we're doing in our lives and we're saying in our lives that you know hold us back from the things that we really want to do and talk about positive self-image. Now I'm going to talk about some things that we've discussed before on 60 and Me, but it's um, there's some things that we how that we view ourselves that hold us back, these negative thoughts that keep us back. So the first thing, and I'm going to give you an action too to, for each one of these so you've got something you can do to handle it or to respond to it. Now. I guess the first question is, are you happy? <laughs> you know, are you happy with your life? And if you aren't completely the way you want to be, you know, are these possibly some of the things that are, that are in your way? Now, the first thing is thinking to yourself, you know, I'm not good enough. Well, you are. <laughs> you are good enough. But a lot of women feel this way. They feel somehow that all the things they've done in their life don't amount to enough and they just don't feel good. So I think that's the very first one, is to look at that, that feeling of not feeling good enough and ex examining the things you've done in your life that have been amazing, things that you've really helped people with, that you've changed a life. You know, look on, back on the generosity that you've given to others. And I think with that action, you can start to get in perspective that you are good enough. You know, you're not perfect. <laughs> no, I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. We're, we're all flawed. We're all, we all have weaknesses, but we're good enough. The second one is to say, I'm not strong enough. You may be facing something that's really, really tough. And I know there are women in our community dealing with health issues, financial issues, children, relationships. It's really, really hard. And you may say to yourself, I'm just not strong enough. But you are. And the way you can take an action to, to, you know, believe, to make yourself believe that is to basically think of the difficulties that you've encountered in your life. Think of the things you've, you've mastered, the, 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 the battles you've fought. And look at those, you know, those war wounds, those battle wounds, and be proud of them. And know that you, know, you made it, you did it. Yeah, you may have bumped along, you may have not been dealing with it the way that was perfect, you know, looking back, but you did, you were strong enough and you survived. Another thing is, people say, is that I'm not brave enough. This is just too much. I'm just not brave enough. I, I can't handle this situation. And I think that there's, you know, a lot of truth here to, to this. And I, I, in fact, I was just thinking about the situation when I was in Bali. And uh, I, I really wanted to ride a scooter. I mean, everybody rides scooters in Bali. It's like, a, you know, it's the uh, means of, of um, transportation. And I was not brave enough. I said, you know, I just, I just honestly, I'm scared. And someone said, oh, come on, jump on. We'll take you for a ride. And I, I just did it. And I, you know, I was, and I mean, that's a tiny thing, you know, that's a very silly little thing, really, that I rode a scooter that I was afraid of riding, but I was brave enough when I started to look at the things that I, you know, that I could do, that I was afraid of doing. So I guess an action here is to do something that you've never done before. 
you know, join a club, uh, go on a, a meetup group meeting, um, try, just try something that you've never done in your life that you felt, oh, I just can't do it. Now, I'm not saying you have to jump out of an airplane or do anything really dramatic, although you could do that if you wanted, but you know, it's just, uh, just do something that, that makes you feel brave because you are. A final one that a lot of people talk about is I'm not rich enough. And we get this comment a lot. I mean, I, I even sometimes say it myself, you know, I'm not rich enough to do these things I, I would like to do or places I'd like to go. And I think the thing there is to redefine rich <laughs> and redefine what, what it means to have abundance in your life. Yes, you may not be able to afford to go on a cruise or go on a trip that you've always wanted to do. But, you know, I think if you change your attitude to it and see that richness is about um, emotions and feelings and connections. It's your friends. It's your family. It's you know. It's not money. It's not stuff. It's not stuff. It's it's the it's the feeling inside that you have enough abundance. You're grateful for what you have. So I think that's the thing about money. Yes, you may not be rich enough in quotes with dollars in your pocket, but you are rich in your heart. And that's I'd love to give you that action just to dwell on that thought for the day. Now. I do have a story here about someone who understands this last comment very well. And this is a story that I know is going to warm your heart. Um, it's, it's just made me feel so good about, um, about life and about the situation in, in Syria particularly. Um, you know, it's, it's about a man, his name is Rami Adman, and he is known as the, as the Aleppo toy smuggler. And what this man does, he's Finnish, he's from Finland, but he also has Syrian um, background. Uh, he lives in Finland, and, and as, much as, as many times as he can a year, he gathers up toys and takes them to Syria. Now, he has friends in Syria who try to get him in, you know, through easy ways, but the borders are shut, it's difficult to get in. He always manages to find a way, because he knows what brings a smile to the children of Aleppo and other cities, other towns in, um, in Syria. And that is toys. And honestly, I watched this film yesterday of him handing out toys to the children. It was so sweet. I mean, these little kids, I mean, they've got no homes. They've got no toys. Uh, many of them have lost um, parents. They've lost brothers and sisters they've, and family. They have nothing. So to hand them a little Barbie doll or a little, um, little stuffed animal, it was just so emotional. And um, you know, he just says that the girls love Barbie dolls, the boys love um, football, and they like uh, stuffed animals. And he just goes to as many places as he can and hands out these little toys. And uh, he's had 28 visits to Syria um, from Helsinki in the past four years, 28 trips. And he's done this through, through uh, crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. He, um, he gathers money and um, you know, saves it himself and just goes. He says that the Barbie dolls are quite heavy, <laughs> so he puts those in his backpack and um, his carry-on luggage. And he just, when he gets to Syria, he, he carries those himself over the, the mountains on his back because he knows that they mean so much to these little girls. And he, he crams about 100 Barbie dolls into each of his bags. And then, uh, you know, he takes, he, he takes everything together that's been donated and he's bought. He says it often weighs like 150 pounds and he puts it on his back and just walks as much as he can to the villages. And he uh, recently went to, I forget the name of the village now, but it was one that had been bombed um, in the last few weeks. And he just went in there and handed out toys. So anyway, that's just a positive thing that this man is doing for the kids in Aleppo and other, other, other towns. He said this time he actually couldn't get um, into Aleppo because of the fighting. So he, but that's where he was raised. And so he has a special um, feeling for Aleppo, but he wasn't able to get there this time. But he, he got to, feel, to feed and nourish children with these wonderful toys. And I love his little quote here. He says, this feeling of giving toys to the children nourishes me. It recharges my batteries. These are little heroes that represent Syria's future. And to me, they're incredibly valuable to preserve, to give them a moment out of the fear and instability. So I think he's a great man, Rami Adman. You can read his story online and um, you know, just be inspired by someone who's taking action to do what he feels is right and gives his life purpose. I think it's a beautiful story. So let me now go on to our beautiful story, which is our, pri our, our little prize, little present from yesterday. It's a gift. And the person, I've got it right behind me here, <laughs> the person that I have chosen to win this gorgeous scarf 
is Bernadette Fidanza. Hi Bernadette. Well, I hope you enjoy the scarf and that you wear it in good health and happiness. And uh, thanks for being here, for supporting 60 and Me, and uh, just for turning up every day on, and on mornings with 60 and Me. I really appreciate it. So Bernadette, just uh, send me your details. I've sent you a message to uh, give you instructions what to do and uh, congratulations and thank you. Now, um, I've got a little surprise for today. This is a, an interesting one. I don't know if it will be of interest to everyone, but it certainly will be to people who love dogs. <laughs> so I've got in my hand, I hope it's not gonna turn the screen too dark, a really cute little postcard. It's of this St. Bernard, which is, as you know, the Swiss um, national dog, <laughs> and these little uh, terriers from somewhere. And it's just a cute little uh, postcard. And I think the reason it's so cute is it's got the, um, a, a Swiss stamp on it. So if you love postcards, like I do, and you love dogs, and, and you love getting uh, postcards from foreign countries, this is for someone today. So just go up to, um, or at least leave a comment below. It can be on any topic. And uh, just let me say what you think about anything, life, Saturday, what you're doing tomorrow, um, whether whether you're, um, you know, enjoying mornings with 60 and me, just whatever ever comes across your mind. And I'll choose a name randomly and send this lovely little postcard from Switzerland. So that's my gift for today. Now, I do have a question for you. And it goes back to the article about um, positive self-talk. And I would love you to answer the question, you know, what is one positive action that you are going to take today to make life in your 60s great? Please leave a comment below, you know, what, what action you're going to take today and share your comments with other people. I'm loving how people are talking to each other. It's really cool. And uh, I just want to thank you again for being here and remind you to tell a friend about 60 and Me and, and to join us on Mornings with 60 and Me. We'd love to have you here. So my question for the day is, what is one positive action that you're going to take today to make life in your 60s just wonderful? Okay, well, have a great Friday, everyone. I hope you've got something fun planned, and I look forward to seeing you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Bye for now.